Sometimes you may encounter limits of undetermined form, 0 divided by 0, involving some square roots. For these limits, all the techniques we learned up to now will fail. We do have a nice trick, however, to evaluate this type of limits. It's called multiplication by the conjugate. We will use this trick to compute two limits in this example. But even better, you may be able to use this trick later on to, sim to simplify other problems. So, how does it work? Let's take a look. First of all, we have this horrible looking limit over here. Square root of t squared plus 9 minus 3 equals over t squared. Plugging in t equals 0 directly gives you a 0 over 0. So, what are we going to do? We will use what's called the conjugate uh, uh, of the numerator. What's that? Well, we have the numerator square, square root of t squared plus 9 minus 3. And if you multiply that by square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3, and something nice happens. If you work out the brackets, then you get the square root times the square root, this term, a square root times plus 3, and the square root times minus 3. So those terms cancel out. That's exactly part one of the idea. And the minus 3 times 3 equals a minus 3 squared. And then it becomes even better if you work out the square root squared, because the square root of t squared plus 9 squared equals t squared plus 9, minus 9 equals t squared. So you can see that you can sort of simplify those horrible enumerators by multiplying with uh, square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. Well, is this allowed to do that just like that? Of course not, but you can multiply by 1. So we start with our horrible function and we multiply it by like this. And we can do that because, well, if you would uh, uh, plug in in this uh, 1 and 0 straight away, you get something like 6 over 6, so that is fine. So you can really multiply this by 1 like this. And then we have seen that our numerator simplifies to t squared. And we have a nasty term over here left, but oh, that's more or less okay. I already see, of course, what's going to happen. You get a t squared over t squared, which simplifies in the limit. So what happens if we try to compute the limit? Limit t to 0 of uh, square root t squared plus 9 minus 3 over t squared. You multiply by 1, and as we saw before, your function, what's left is this part, so plug it in here immediately. We take the limit t to 0, so t is not equal to 0, so that is why we can cancel out the factors of uh, t squared. And then we are happy because now we don't have a 0 over 0 anymore. And now we can apply all the rules we know. So, well, we start with the quotient rule. I limit t to 0 of the numerator divided by t to 0 of the denominator. Numerator is easy, of course. Uh, then we apply the sum rule over here. Limit t to 0 of square root of square root plus 9 plus limit t to 0 of 3. Well, the second limit equals 3. That one is standard. Then we can... Uh, apply the root law, we can take the limit inside the square root, that's what we do over here, and then we can apply the uh, uh, sum rule again, uh, limit of the sum equals the sum of the limits, and again this is innocent, uh, you can just uh, use the power law again if you want, uh, and you get then finally the square root of 0 plus 9 uh, plus 3 equals the uh, 1 over 3 plus 3 equals 1 over 6. There we have our limit. So the hard work actually is in the first part, where we got rid of this uh, horrible 0 over 0. After that, it is just applying all the basic rules uh, one after each other, and there is no, uh, no danger anymore in the limit. Go to a second example. This one looks really awkward. x to 2 of square root of uh, 6 minus x minus 2 over square root of 3 minus x minus 1. If you would plug in x equals 2 directly, you get square root of 4 minus 2 equals 2 minus 2 equals 0 over square root of 1 minus 1 equals 1 minus 1 equals 0. So, again, something like 0 over 0. So you cannot plug it in directly, you cannot do use all the rules like cohesion rule x, etc. But how can you apply uh, the conjugate? Because you have basically two square roots 
Oh, that's fun. Two square roots, apply the conjugate twice. Uh, so, with the numerator, a uh, square root of 6, uh, six minus uh, 6 minus 6 minus 2, multiply by 1, like this. Square root of 6 minus 6 plus 2 divided by square root of 6 minus 6 plus 2, and make it into one fraction, like that. And then the numerator simplifies, of course. That is the whole idea. That gives you the square root of 6 minus x squared minus 2 squared, because the other terms, uh, square root of 6 minus x times plus 2, cancels out with the square root of 6 minus x times minus 2. And then if you work out what's in the numerator there, you get a 6 minus x uh, minus 4 equals 2 minus x over square root of 6 minus x plus 2. Still doesn't look really nice. Well, remember that x is uh, approaching 2, so this numerator goes to 0, uh, whilst the denominator is now innocent, it goes to uh, 2 plus 2 equals 4. And then we do exactly the same trick with the square root of 3 minus x minus 1. So we multiply by 1, this factor over here, square root of 3 minus x plus 1 over square root of 3 minus x plus 1. Then we simplify the uh, numerator, it's again of the form, a minus b times a plus b, so this will be a squared minus b squared, or 3 minus x uh, minus 1, so uh, 2 minus x over square root of 3 minus x plus 1. So, what do we have? We have our numerator simplified to this expression, and we have our denominator simplified to that expression. And observe the dangerous parts here are now the same. So if we take the quotients, first it looks awkward, so if we insert the expressions here and there. So at first sight it looks awkward, but uh, dividing by fraction is the same as multiplying by its inverse, so that's what we do over here. And then you see that those factors 2 minus x, the dangerous factors, are now cancelling out, so we get a new limit. It still looks awkward, but look what happened now. If we just plug in equals x equals 2, we get 3 minus 2 equals 1 plus 1, so 2 over 6 minus 2 equals 4, square root equals 2 plus 2 equals 4. So the 0 over 0 has gone. Now we have removed the indeterminacy, and you can just apply all your no uh, normal rules, like the quotient rule, which we do first, and then uh, the, the other rules, which yields you square root of 1 plus 1 equals 1 uh, equals uh, 2, sorry. Plus uh, divided by square root of 4 plus 2 equals 2 plus 2 equals 4. So you get uh, 2 over 4 equals 1 half. So there you are. You, so you see how you can use the multiplication with this conjugate in order to simplify your limits, in order to remove your indeterminacies.